as the Britain includes the design of masonry and concrete cantilever retaining walls. But what about if you need to design your retaining wall in a metric system? Fortunately, as the Britain includes three different systems of units that you can use. US International System SI metric or MKS metric system as well. This is Javier Encinas and today we're going to design completely from scratch a cantilever retaining wall example using SI metric system. Let's get started. This is a concrete cantilever retaining wall, which is 7.2 meters high from the top of footing to the top of wall. It has a surcharge, 30 kPa, on top of the uh, backfill. The backfill properties are phi, the internal friction angle, 30 degrees, and the density is 19 kilonewtons per cubic meter. Also, we'll use a concrete F'C, 30 MPa, and FY, 500 MPa. The allowable bearing pressure is 250 kilonewtons per square meter. We need to find the dimensions of the wall and design the reinforcement as well. When you open as the Britain, you see the project manager, where you can see the modules included in the package, cantilever retaining walls, counterfoil retaining walls, and restrained retaining walls. In this case, we're going to use this module, the cantilever retaining wall. Just click on the button to create a calculation. Let's call it example. Add it. And the calculation has been added to the tree. Double click on the tree. And this is the template of a cantilever retaining wall in ASDIP written. In this case, we're going to change the system of units. Instead of US, we're going to use SI, system of units. So now we have meters, centimeters, and kilonewtons units. We can see graphically the wall as we change the dimensions. We know from the statement of the problem that the stem height is 7.2 meters. Let's enter that. This is a pretty high wall, so we uh, can assume that the uh, stem thickness is about uh, 65 centimeters. The footing also needs to be thicker. Let's go to the footing tab. Instead of 50, let's say 65 centimeters as well. Now let's enter the loads that we already know. We know from the problem statement that phi is 30 degrees and the density is 19. Let's enter that information. Density is 19. Let's use the Coulomb active pressure theory. The internal friction angle is 30 degrees. And also the water table is one meter from the bottom of the footing. The source charge is 30 kPa. We don't have any concentrated load and we don't have any wind or seismic. Let's go to geometry. We go to the backfill. The backfill height is the same height of the, of the stem, so 7.2. And we know that in this example, the backfill is uh, flat level, so zero degrees slope. So basically this is our wall with the correct loads. We go to the materials tab. We enter here the material properties for the concrete. We know that is 30 MPa and the reverse is 500. The same applies for the footing. 30 and 500. We know from the statement of the problem that the allowable soil bearing pressure is 250 kilonewtons per square meter. The friction coefficient between the bottom of the footing and the underlying soil is 0 0.50, so it's correct. Internal friction angle of the uh, natural soil is 28 degrees. Now that we have entered all the information from the statement of the problem, we can start optimizing the design. If we go to our glance, we can see a summary of the results in just one screen. We can see here immediately that uh, the design is failing in several areas. For example, the stability check is failing in overturning and sliding, and also the soil bearing pressure is, uh, is overstressed. It's, it's more than the allowable bearing capacity, in addition to some other areas that we need to take care of as well. So uh, we need to start uh, modifying the dimensions. If we go to our, uh, the footing tab in, in geometry, 
we can change here the tall or the heel uh, dimensions as required for example if we change the the heel instead of two meters let's say three meters we can see that the overturning safety factor is okay now but the sliding safety factor is still under the minimum allowable safety factor maybe we're going to need a shear key let's say that the shear key is 40 centimeters and also 40 centimeters thick so the sliding improved but it still is under the minimum uh, allowable safety factor for sliding we can see here that the soil bearing pressures were already fixed the maximum bearing is 247 versus the allowable which is 250 so the bearing pressure is okay now we can see that graphically here so the maximum bearing pressure is under the allowable which is okay the sliding is still a problem so we need to increase the sliding capacity uh, we need to in increase even more the depth of the key maybe 50 centimeters that increase a little bit but not much so we need to increase the heel to uh, increase also the weight and, and therefore increasing the friction instead of 3 say 350 3.5 and the sliding is fixed now we can go back to 40 centimeters for the key yes we'll go to our glance one more time the stability check is is okay now both overturning and sliding are over the minimum safety factors and the allowable bearing pressure is okay now this is about 220 versus 250 is okay the shear forces determine the thickness of the members the shear ratio for the stem is 0.79 so we can leave it as it is the shear ratio for the heel is 67 percent we could reduce a little bit the thickness of the footing but it's better to leave it the way it is being a little bit conservative on that the capacity of the members in flexure will depend on the rebars we'll go there in, in a minute so let's check the wall with the current dimensions it looks like that you know the stem is prismatic the same dimension at the top and at the bottom if necessary we could make it taper for example instead of 65 at, at the at the top we can for example at the top could be 30 and say that is uh, taper in the toe side like that so it's a little thinner at the top and thicker at the bottom many contractors prefer to use prismatic members instead of taper it's easier and probably cheaper also from the construction standpoint so let's uh, leave it 65 prismatic member even when there is more material at the top that is not necessary it's cheaper to do it this way at the construction if we go to the stem tab here we can see the moment and shear diagram the blue areas represent the capacity in shear and this line is the shear diagram for the stem this is the moment diagram of the stem and the blue is the bending capacity obviously right now the stem is failing so we need to go to the reinforcement tab stem tab you know the main vertical rebars are the ones that are on the backfield side let's use b25 which is the 25 millimeters uh, diameter rebar we can see that the capacity didn't increase much so we need to go with the larger rebars maybe b32 and uh, it's not enough yet so we need to uh, reduce the spacing of the rebars instead of uh, the 32 at 30 centimeters let's say every 20 centimeters it's uh, barely working so probably we need to go to 18 centimeters spacing it's okay we are specifying here to cut off alternate backfill bars if we, if we uncheck this box we can see the full capacity all the way up but if we uh, cut off alternate rebars a certain dimension we can uh, optimize the design as well instead of two meters but maybe we need to increase it probably to three three meters 
or, or even probably four meters to be conservative, like that. So if we don't cut off the rebars, the capacity looks like this. If we cut off the rebars, we are improving a little bit, optimizing the design. Maybe we can go to 3.5 meters. Here looks much, much better, okay? So with this configuration, uh, the stem should, should be working. Let's go to at a glance. It said that the minimum steel area is failing. That's uh, the transverse uh, rebars. For example, here, let's uh, say number 16. And now is working. So the stem is done. Let's go. Let's move to the to the toe. Go to the footing, the toe bars. Let's say that we're going to use the 25s to be consistent with the stem. Let's put it 18 centimeters spacing. And the minimum steel area is failing because the transverse rebars are uh, less than the minimum. Let's choose. Uh, 16 as well and now the minimum steel area ratio is fine the heel is failing in moment capacity so let's uh, select the 25 similar to the to the toe to 18 centimeters as well the capacity is 0.94 perfect the development length ratio is, is is fine and the minimum steel area ratio is also okay so with this configuration we are uh, passing all these checks in the Araglance tab. We go to the Contents tab, we can see in more detail a set of results uh, grouped by topic. This is the controlling load combination for stem design, for sliding, for heel design and for toe design. So we can check granularly all these numbers if necessary. If we go to the detail tab, we can see a more detailed set of calculations step by step with exposed formulas and also with uh, references to the ACI code. So if necessary, we can check in more detail every single number that the program did internally. We go to the footing tab, we can see the design of the toe, the controlling combination for flexure and for shear, and the design ratios less than one for the controlling combinations shown there and for the heel also uh, the flexure and shear ratios and the controlling load combinations please note that uh, in the design of the heel we are considering the bearing pressure in the design many engineers prefer to ignore completely the bearing uh, pressure upward this is conservative but if you decide to do the design that way just go here to the design criteria, conditions. Here where it says neglect bearing for heel design, just check that box and the bearing will be neglected. Obviously, this will not pass because we are you know, ignoring all this pressure upward and the design will fail in this case. But uh, it's up to the decision of the designer how to proceed, if consider or not to consider the bearing pressure for the heel design. Finally, we go to the construction tab. We can see here in section and in elevation views the retaining wall with the rebars that we just specified. This is the uh, alternate rebars cut off in the stem. So this is a final design. With this, we conclude the presentation of this cantilever retaining wall example in metric SI units. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future of similar videos. Thank you very much for your attention.